All right. So, yeah, I know it's already kicked in. Cool. So, we got 10 fires here at the top side of the map as the yellow Roman player. The lower side of the map, we've got another Roman player in Rotten, the man formerly known as Lebo. So, thank you all for tuning in. Sorry for the pretty crappy start to the stream. Had a hell of a lot of uh, connectivity problems between myself and Dimmy, which meant that we weren't able to do his games versus Smeager and myself. So we've already played Smeager against me, which was a hell of a uh, Persia versus Norse match. And now we've got Tempires here. He was supposed to play FF and Easy, but Rotten's turned up. FF and Easy was online while we were playing the earlier matchups and has uh, gone AFK for whatever reason. So we've got Rotten filling in here. Both our players look to be going oh, for early... I would say early barracks, but no, Lebo's actually, he's gotten hunting dogs. Tempires is going to go early Castellum. So this is a map where you've got to be very careful. There's actually all these uh, units here. So this is Hill Fort, and I believe there's even like a really weak fortress building. These guys are pretty strong though. So there's a heck of a slog to actually get to your opponent, unless you're very careful and, you know, make sure your army goes right down the middle here to not pull either of those groups to attack you. So Tempires is going to have to be very careful if he moves out here. Rotten, on the other hand, this might work in his favour. It'd be hard for Tempires to reach his base and reinforce with the spears without taking damage, unless he's positioned this pretty luckily. I suppose you could also sort of rally it to the middle and then manually micro, I mean manually rally the spears into the base, which is probably what I'll have to do. So we don't really see this map a huge amount, but it, I think it's pretty well balanced in terms of the layout of what resources are going to spawn either side of it. You get a fairly ample amount, not a huge amount of space, but it's enough to set up a proper market line at least. And then, you know, there's a, a lot of resources on here. There's three golds. There's this fortress building. It, it does hit quite hard, still. And that's, yeah, a hell of a lot of an army to clear. So, Tempires is going to be a bit careful with how he comes in here. No, he's going to miss it. That'll be good. So, he's got a bunch of spears. He'll be a bit late in terms of when he hits. Rotten is already aging. So the score difference is mainly because Rotten's invested 400 resources into something that hasn't paid off yet. While well, Tempires has already invested all those resources in Spearmen. So what's this? 60 each. So it's got 300 resources there. Almost as much as the worth as the town center. So this will get him some value. Pull him ahead for a bit. But he's not going to get any actual kills here. So the gather loss is really all just in terms of the gap between this and this for now and Tempires is actually banking quite a bit of food that he doesn't actually need he's cut spears but he's kept gathering he's got 10 villages over here so he really doesn't need that many he needs to actually look at getting on the next hunt because you know that, that might run out of food it's more than enough to get Hansel and have another villager queued up after the age up, in fact, he wants to have the age up starting before he gets that amount in the bank, ideally. Because then that means he can have a little bit more wood and stone in this position. He could probably have, you know, about 100 wood and close to 100 stone already. But he's transitioned pretty well there. He didn't have too much gather time. He's left one wheel behind to just gather that, which I think is pretty smart. So he's trying to harass the wood. I think he's actually gotten any... Vils there, 16 Vils to 17, so and that gap's mainly in terms of the uh, age up. Pretty even on that front, but Rotten does have the faster second TC here, so Tempires on the other hand is going to have faster access to Legionaries, which will be the bulk of the composition early on here. A couple of Spears will be nice though in case your opponent does tick to Curions. Because they're quite tanky, and if your legionaries are attacking them, they're not getting the bonus damage that they would if they were attacking each other. Mm. 
But early on, you generally see just a big mass of legionaries until you get to age three. And then, you know, it gets a bit more built around Scorps or Bowmen at the back line, and then people will start to get Ekes out because they want to be able to kill that back line. And also start to deal a bit more raiding damage. Split up the army a little bit easier. So Tempires hasn't got his second TC yet. He's not actually training any uh, Vils at the moment. He really needs to get a house. So I don't know... Oh, here we go. He's going for his next town center, but he really needs to get another house here. Because right now he's not actually producing any Vils. Here we go. He's going for some more houses. But this will be a big blow because Lebo is already... Five Vils ahead, already has that double Vil production. So even though he didn't have the early military that Tempires had, Tempires able to put a bit of pressure on, but, you know, other than sort of restricting where Temp uh, Lebo can get this town center, doesn't hit him that hard. So Rotten's going to go Praetorium before Castellum, which I think is a bit of a gamble, because Tempires could already have kept producing spears or even have a mix of his leftover spears and a bunch of legionaries make it very easy to prevent raiding with these because they're quite expensive and quite greedy in terms of early population. They take up three pop the end the age two units to do so. You know, you can have more infantry out and not interrupt your uh, training of anything out of your uh, barracks or your uh, town centers because each house is only going to give you five pop. So you've got to really invest early wood into house production once you start getting Decurion production going. Because alternatively, you could have three barracks worth of units producing instead. They do train a little bit slower, but still, eating up three pop at once is a big ask for your uh, early game wood eco. Because it does put pressure on you to really cram out the houses. And the two Decurions, like if uh, Tempires had six spears, he'd just eat that for breakfast. Oh, Rotten, be careful. What are you doing? No, no. Lebo. You're taking all this damage for free. Right, well, he's going to be able to hit the villagers anyway. He doesn't lose either Decurion. He loses a lot of health on them, which might come into play a little bit later. But for now, the villagers aren't going to be able to fight these guys off. Tempires is going to have to run them away. Probably lose one or two here. So he's already lost one there. Gonna be able to garrison. Lebo's gonna back off, which is pretty smart. Oh no, he's gonna go back in, and he's not looking either, which is ooh. Thankfully, in the mirror at least, nothing is gonna be faster than what he's got here. But he needs to be very careful to not lose them. Tempo has some idlers there that are gonna try and gather a little bit further over. But this might be a bad idea to not bring the army. Oh no, he is gonna bring the army. They're just going a different direction. Lebo's running past, but not staying. So it's a good idea for Tempires to bring everything just to keep these guys safe. Lebo massing up the rest of his forces back at home. So population is definitely favoring Lebo. 49 villages to 39. So Tempires getting housed early, having the second town center go down later. It's already started to impact the economy of his. Lebo's got a bit of an advantage out of that without really having to apply any good pressure. He's killed one villager with the Decurions, um, but he was a bit lucky to not actually lose any of them while trying to raid them because he just walked straight through the fortress and then was cruising through the base without actually watching the army for a bit as well. But he's in a nice spot economically. He really hasn't had any problems there. Tempires on the other hand, he's defended reasonably well, but this is too early for him to try and take this. He's actually losing a handful of units there, which is not great because he's already down in terms of uh, economy. So now he's down in terms of army size as well. 
It's got plenty in the bank though. And he's got a lot of production buildings. Rotten's not producing as much at the moment. But they've got even production, but Rotten's not producing as much. Tempires is everything in the queue. Rotten's lacking a little bit of gold to be able to spam. We need maybe two more villages on the gold. He's got plenty of food at the moment, in fact. He can probably cut, you know, two or three villages, chuck them on the gold. Put future workers on wood and stone and, yeah, look at just massing up and aging up from this position. Because Tempires can't really push him. He's lost early army here. He's uh, made a bit of a misplay with early eco. But he did put up a reasonable defense against the Decurions. He got the villagers out. He uh, brought the army across and then followed the Decurions around. But... Tempire is going for a little bit of a push. He's picked off the unit there, but he does have a smaller army here, so he's going to have to back out. It's an especially impressive front line of Decurions, I think. Yeah, we're at the last one in training here for Rotten. So once he's got all of those, in fact, he's going double Decurion. I mean, double Praetorium there in the end. It's a bit of an expensive commitment because... They're good for this age 2 fight, but they really fall off once players have access to Ekes. They are still quite a nice tank though, because at this age they really force out a handful of extra spears, which will just get deleted by the Legionaries. Otherwise they're just a great tank against Legionaries, while they get wrecked by other legionaries because of the counter damage. So Rotten's getting his uh, melee armor. He's got, already got melee damage. Tempires is getting melee damage now. Lacking melee armor for the time being. So he is down an upgrade on his opponent. Levo might be looking to try and... I say try and push out here, but no, he's going to go age 3 first. He's not looking to throw down an immense amount of production and just push. He's just going to get that third town center, I think, and try and get a uh, legionary champion. Because if he can get that, then he can really look at pushing Tempires here. He's already got a uh, upgrade advantage, but if he doesn't push now, he's not going to be able to take advantage of it. He'll probably sit back and wait for age 3 instead. Tempires in the meanwhile... Adding some houses. He's housed himself again. 55 villages to 77, so it's really impressive. Lebo hasn't skipped a beat on economy here. The only thing he really needs to do is probably cancel one of these villages in the queue just to get a couple more army units out instead. Plenty of gold for age 3 techs. Tempest has got a huge amount of food, but probably could do with a little bit more gold and wood. Get that age up going. Maybe look at adding more production or preparing for uh, age 3 upgrades and uh, age 3 town center. Age 3 on the way for Tempires now. Tempires is going to try and push because he does have both upgrades now. So Libo hasn't really been able to capitalize on faster upgrades here. But he does have a bigger army. And he is even starting. Caravan production, this is a good idea. Probably cancel a couple though and just add them back into the army and push though. Because I think right now he's definitely got an army size advantage. Hang on, no he doesn't. Where's all this population then? Yeah, Tempice has now got army size advantage. Just purely because Rotten's eco is so much bigger at the moment. Didn't realize just how much bigger. And he does have the hop space to fit in a couple of Aquilifers, which is a good idea. Just gives him that damage boost. Tempires will be looking at doing the same thing. Can't be converted, so they have to be picked off with army and particularly in this sort of matchup both players there's no range so you need to get on top of the Aquilifer and stab him to death 
just to prevent that uh, health boost. Most units here will be just as fast or faster. Aquilifer's not particularly quick, not particularly tanky either. H3 Town Center on the way for uh, Rotten. Tempires. He's got a market in the back as well. This is a nice one. Rotten's going to have to work a little bit harder to keep his defended, but he's already started walling off that side. This is nice and safe for him over on this right side. Even adding a tower. What is this, PvE? He's doing everything here. Watch post, guard tower, walls, upgrades. The Hoover would be proud. Tempire is going to add his market eco. Getting his uh, iron smelting is also age 3 damage. Lebo, there's no age 3 upgrade yet. He's been in age 3 for, uh, for a little bit longer. He has got his legionary champion. But so is Tempire's now. So Lebo's almost throwing away some of these advantages but at the same time just because his eco is so much larger and because he's got everything just that little bit earlier it's really started to compound now he's got so much food in the bank tempires is being choked out of this game without really a blow being traded between at all uh at all between our players here the tempires he did go for the early spear rush lebo did Push with two Decurions. And really, other than a storehouse being killed, uh, picked off and a uh, villager being killed, there hasn't been a lot of action so far. Very passive. Tempires is now starting to reach max population for age 3. A nice garrison here from him. Doesn't lose anything. Well, the Decurions. They're going to be able to do a bit of damage to the town centre, but they're not going to be able to take it out. And they're going to run straight into the army, so this will be a nice catch for Tempires. Because he will clean them up, but not all of them. Rotten's going to go age 4 in the process. Just try and pick off a couple more villages. Just slow down that eco. Make it harder for Tempires to try and get age 4 as well. Let's just find one of the markets, but he's not going to be able to clean this up. Eka is now being trained here by Tempai, so these will be very handy against uh, the Decurions. They're faster, they're much faster. Not as tanky, but they've got crazy good damage against cavalry. Lebo's going to try and take down the market, but it's a bit of a dummy market. So... He's actually... he bought the bait. But Tempires, well, it's not over yet. He's definitely not out of the woods. He's cleaned up a couple of raiding units. But he's still down an age, basically. Or is about to be. Can't quite afford to go to age 4. 91 eco to 73. So Tempires still growing his economy, so he's catching up on that front. But that means he's starting to fall behind just in terms of how much... Well, not fall behind, but... That advantage he'd have in terms of army size, it's falling by the wayside, and his opponent's going to have a bigger bank to back up um, anything that happens when they do get to a more even army size. So Tempires probably needed to look at taking some fights here, or even do so now, just before, yeah, because. Rotten's age 4, he's getting age 4 upgrades. Tempires needs to deal some damage before these all kick in. Otherwise, you know, if he starts killing Eco especially, once all these upgrades are kicked in, he's really... Rotten's got plenty in the bank. But he does need a bit more gold. Did he run out of gold? I think he has. So, our players need to actually clear out these fortresses. <laughs> They're starting to run out of gold. Rotten is adding more caravans, though. Sacramentum, get some cheaper units out. 
Tempai is trying to push in, but the neutral units attacking. A nice back line here for uh, Lebo, actually. And he does have that elite upgrade, so he does have charge. Tempai does have a bigger army, though, and he does... Well, both players have run out of gold at the moment. They're really relying on market trade to keep them afloat. So Tempai is losing all that. This is going to be very tough, because now... Oh, and he's not producing any more uh, caravans here. So both players have pretty much run out of gold here. Someone's going to clear one of these fortresses, because there is stacks at it. Like, this map has actually got more, far more gold than a regular map. It's just that our players never really transitioned into clearing this out before trying to take an age 4 fight. Well, a late game fight. Lebo's going to be able to clear this, though. But Tempai's, this is really tough. He's Now he's got his double caravan production started. But really, he could have kept it going through that whole fight, I think. And it really would have been a benefit for him, too. Because he's not getting a huge amount of gold. And the players would have been hesitant to spend other resources to get gold. Because it does come at a big cost. This will be tough for Tempires because Lebo's now got access to gold that he can mine. Doesn't have to worry about adding more uh, caravans. He just needs to bring some more villages up to get gold rather than gathering so much food or wood. Tempires, 77 bills? He must have a lot of idlers. Or he did. He's got them back to work now. But GG. Tempires tapping out there. So running out of gold there, I think, is what really did him in.